I'm going to begin just by asking you, I mean, it's a fascinating uh, real-life story. What, what compelled you as, as a filmmaker to, to tell this story? Well, I guess the best way to answer this is to tell you how I got to it. Um, I received the screenplay from um, Tim Bevan and Kate Solomon. Uh, the screenplay was written by Gregory Burke, great writer, Scottish writer. And uh, so I read the screenplay. I knew about Entebbe already. Um, and I immediately saw that the screenplay had a different point of view than the other movies made about the event. It wasn't approaching it from a military perspective. It was looking at the hostages, the interaction with the hijackers. It was looking at Shimon Peres' Akrabin. And by doing that, it was open up the story to, uh, to dimensions that had not been explored before and they were incredibly relevant for today's world. Uh, so then I went and I read the book that Saul Davis, Professor Davis had written about it two years before, um, found the same thing, even more so, because it's a very long book. Uh, went to Israel, talked to people who were at the operation, to hostages, to politicians, to Zach Rabin's family and so on, and, and realized that um, the screenplay was accurate, and that the story was incredibly relevant. So I said, yeah, let's, 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 let's give it a try. <laughs> and, and how important is it for you as well that there, there's, there's no such thing in this movie as, as heroes and villains or good and evil? How important is it you, for you that, that the, the um, viewer is able to find empathy with, with everyone in this movie? Well, you know, even from uh, the point of view of dramaturgy, when you're establishing a character in a movie, um, you have to establish what the character wants um, and you have to establish what stops him from getting what he wants. And that's what generates drama, it's conflict, right? So I look at what the Palestinian terrorists want and I let them spell out the reasons to do it. And they're very personal reasons. Some of those soldiers had lost relatives to the Israeli military. So they were in the context of a war. Um, then I look at the Germans and they have uh, ideological reasons to do that. They are Marxists and they are in opposition to Nazism in the history of Germany. And uh, then I look at Shimon Peres and why he doesn't want to negotiate and the political constraints he has to face. And then I look at Rabin. And so by establishing where each of those characters come from, already I, make, I create a certain kind of empathy with them because they all have some internal logic. Mm. You know, there's, the drama uh, exists because those internal logics contradict each other. And I mean, because also, I mean, to, to bring out them, they are very complex characters as well. And I mean, you, you, they've been left in wonderful hands with Osmond and Daniel in this instance. You must have been thrilled to have both of them on board. And in particular, Osmond, who wouldn't be the first person that comes to mind for a role like this. So what was it that made her stand out? Well, um, no, I had, there's a lot of uh, actresses that came to us wanting to make the movie, some of them very famous. And I spoke to all of them, I spoke to Rosemond too. And uh, right away I realized that Rosemond was incredibly knowledgeable about this, uh, very smart. So I asked her, can you speak German? Uh, and I had actually some actresses that had German as their language. Um, and Rosemond said, yes, I can do it and I'll do it perfectly. And I, do, and I go like, but do you speak German? And she says, no, do it phonetically. I go like, oh my God. <laughs> Anyhow, um, but she's such an incredible actress and she was telling me she could do it. So let's, let's roll with it. And lo and behold, she uh, delivered incredible German. Every German person that saw the movie says that to me, perfect, flawless. And she you know, gave the dramatic uh, punch that a great actress can give you. So very happy that she joined the movie. Eddie Martian, though, is incredible. Uh, and so is Lior. So like the four main characters in this movie, um, I was very um, lucky to get those actors, you know. And I mean, the film is also quite very creatively inclined. I love the, 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 the Batshaver dance company, the, the, the uh -huh. dance sequences. What, yeah. what, was, what inspired that decision to have those kind of um, bookending this movie? A lot of the movie, um, has to do with the constraints on politicians in Israel and Palestine to negotiate with each other. It's uh, because it's a conflict. It's been going on for a very long time. There's a lot of uh, politicians that um, made their careers by saying, I'm going to protect you from your enemy. And, uh, and in an environment like this, 
to say I'm going to sit down with them and talk is very hard and it's taxing politically. Um, so I thought, how do I make a comment on that without writing something in a movie? And I, and I knew already that dance. And what is the dance? The dance is a step on stage. They are all wearing orthodox clothes. They perform dancing movements that suggest self-inflicted pain. And as the movie progresses and the dance progresses, they start to strip themselves of their clothes, of their orthodoxy. Um, and the only dancer who doesn't do that keeps falling from the chair, keeps falling from the chair. So I thought it was a metaphorical way of saying there's not going to be any solution to this problem unless the political constraints are lifted so there can be real negotiations. And in order to lift those constraints, you, you need to drop your orthodoxy. Mm. So that was what we were trying to say with images in a cinematic way. Thank you so much for your time, Tim. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.